Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, another uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, podcast stream. We will be pl uh, playing um, Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons this evening, and uh, t uh, tonight I will be playing with. Uh, So who starts talking first? Apparently you. Oh. <laughs> shame. What a shame. <laughs> so? I don't know. I don't have any other ideas of what to say here. Just say hello to the audience. Vijay and Nostrovia, my drug I get. I guess that works. Does that work? I'm not the host here. Um, my audio had cut out, so I had to, to fix that. Uh, but no, in English, my my dear friend, in English. <laughs> uh, so I take it, uh, just randomly screeching as scarecrows tend to do is also off the table. Yeah, no, please, please, <laughs> don't, don't do that. Fine. Howdy howdy, I'm Resident Scarecrow, also known as Crow. Uh, tonight I will be playing the lovely Eshrin Yehuda. I am an, an arsonist, and that is all that their character is right now. Wonderful. Um, ha Slack, how about you go next? Tell us about yourself and your character. And if you want to, you can also plug your uh, Twitch channel. All right. Well, hello. I am Slacktopus. You can call me Slack. Uh, I am an alien octopus VTuber and, uh, you know, twitch.tv slash Slacktopus and all that if you want to follow. Um, uh, let's see. I am playing a cleric dwarf named Darius Manus. All righty. Um, and if I could get uh, a... Um mod in the chat to go ahead and shout out slack for me um and then oko why don't you tell us uh your uh, about yourself and your character my name is oko um not much to tell i will be playing a dwarf whose name is vecta wonderful all right, so I'm going to kind of read out what the uh, the players were sent as the plot of tonight's game, and then we will uh, continue. We'll continue on. Um, apparently, my frames are dropping like fucking mad. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, the ancient Taig of Mirohir was a city vast and deep, made by the ancient Gurugar during the Age of Change. The, in, in history's uh, long past, that uh, this age was known as the God's Rule. During this time, an ancient evil force known as the Saurians rose and attacked the Dwarven city with their northern brethren defending the last dragon to their, uh, to their deaths. The Durgar were outnumbered and wiped out. The city had laid dormant for over 5,000 years, now infested with frost gr goblins, gray orcs, grung, intellect devourers, and all matter, manner of nasty beasts. It's been 5,000 years since civil eyes have, set, uh, have been inside the Taig. Uh, prophecy tells of a band of heroes, bold and strong, who will one day, in time, retake the mountain and the treasure that lies beneath the, beneath the ancient armor of King Miro, the Bayhir's Bane. Um, so that's, uh, that's the basic premise of tonight's game. Um, this will be, uh, hopefully two sessions long, maybe, if y'all are down for that. I usually plan these for three, but I think I can close it out in two. Um, because yeah. I don't like, uh, I don't like, uh, recruiting people for, for longer than three sessions, but, uh, be at least prepared for three. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> um, so, I. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and and, uh, and kind of set the scene. Uh, you all uh, have been an adventuring party for, you know, a couple uh, a couple of months now. You've been you've, you've gone around and done some odd jobs for for towns here and there. Um, 
you kind of already know know one another within uh within like the group dynamic and 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 in time you've kind of become at least a cohesive unit if not friends um the uh the you are in the town of uh willow's crest just above the uh the mall of the world which is a massive uh like valley between the uh the hammerholm mountains and the uh and the mountains that lead to the sea uh above it and uh and within that is the uh taig of Nidohir. Uh, a uh, the ancient city in which you are being paid to go and uh, and kind of investigate uh, as locals have not only known the legends but also so people have gone missing recently. Something's been dragging them toward Nido here. So you're kind of being you you you've been uh, kind of called upon by the mayor of of Willow's Crest um to to uh investigate the the tig you are currently in uh in the crest wor- crest woven tavern uh drinks have kind of been given and you are at like a, a booth uh so you can talk amongst yourselves about your the job ahead okay Sorry, still nervous. You're okay. <laughs> so, remind me again the job ahead. I'm you taking notes. Okay. You are. Uh, are we doing at home? Um, you have been hired by the mayor of uh, Willow's Crest to investigate the Taig of uh, Miro here and potentially rescue, if not bring back. Uh, word of the missing townsfolk. Okay. So. I feel like it would be best if we, like. So, like, ask, a, ask people around about it or something? That is something you can do. You could go around town and ask about. Mm. Asking about missing persons, perhaps. Um, that's what I would think would be the best uh, first point of action is, you know, getting some leads if we're going to be investigating the place. What do you guys think? Out of character or in character? Uh, Let's go in with in character. character? Yeah, let's... yeah, I think it'll be a pretty good idea. I mean, you never hurt to learn a bit too much. Usually. Better safe than sorry, I'd say. Ailey free. I vote we get started as soon as we can. All right. Um, is there anyone around that seems like they are like open to being like having conversation? Being accosted by strangers? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, well, there's the bartender, uh, a uh, tall. Uh, for for a dwarf, he's taller. Um, portly gentleman. He's uh balding on the top, red hair, long, finely braided red beard. Um, he's uh he's standing behind the bar, kind of cleaning out a, a glass with uh probably not the cleanest of rags, but it's what he's got. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, I'll I'm gonna approach him. You know, casually. Uh, you would uh, have by, eat at the. Uh, you what? would have by this time no uh, uh learned his name. His name is Sendry. Sendry. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna. Are there like seats at the bar? Oh yeah, like, there there are some. There there are there are pretty much. It's the middle of the day. Not a lot of people are in here, so there are some open seats. 
All right, so I'm going to go up to the bar, take a seat there, and be like, so, uh, Sendry, um, quick question, if you don't mind. Uh, what can I do for you? Um, we're wondering if you've heard any news about the missing peoples that have been coming up lately. Well, from what I understand, uh, something is, is snatching people from their homes and dragging them toward the tide. It's, uh, from what I can tell and what the local guard have investigated already, um, is some form of four-legged beastie with big claws. So, like, is it like feline, canine, reptilian? You got any ideas? Um, well, is is strange because they've not. The problem we're finding is is that. You see the tracks going into the house, and then the tracks leading out are just the tracks of of the people who lived there. The clawed beastie of whatever nature it is has larger um, paws of some kind, four appendages, large uh, claws from what we can tell in the ground, but they don't seem to match up to any animal we've been able to compare them to. The biggest thing I could really compare it to is a dragon. So, what you're saying is... But it's much uh, smaller a than a dragon. A dragon is dragon people away. <laughs> I... They're dragon-like claws, but also tell a pun like that again, I'm gonna throw you out of my bar. <laughs> All right, all right, my bad. <laughs> but, um, would you happen to know any of the recent people who have reported missing folks? Well, what we're noticing is it's people who have no family ties. So people who, not a lot of people go asking about, but enough of them have gone missing for people to notice. Um, you know, vagrants going missing from their hovels, vagabonds, travelers going missing from hotel from from the inn, things of that nature. Um but old lady uh Josie on uh, on Fifth uh the Fifth Street over here, she's she's gone missing recently and she was she was an older lady but she was a powerful mage and that means something is taking these people that's strong enough to take a rather strong wizard. Sounds dangerous. I'd say so. That's why we called for adventurers. Fair point. Um, hmm. I suppose we could investigate down on Fifth, then. Well, yeah, you could probably get the house key to Josie's house from... Uh, from the mayor. That's his, that's his mother. Oh, right, right. Get in from the mayor. I'm just writing all of this down in a little pad. <laughs> yeah, you can absolutely have, like, a little vellum notebook. Fifth key from mayor. Okay. You're one of them learned folks who's got uh, abilities to read and write, are you? <laughs> yeah, I figured that it's um, best to be able to keep track of things, as you never know when something might go awry. That's that's understandable. Most people just uh, just tell stories to keep track of things, but writing's a good good medium too. Been doing it for quite some time. It's a uh... Way to pass the time for me. Ah, you holy folk are all taught that way, aren't you? Yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> it's understandable. You gotta be able to write and read the holy texts. Anyway, uh, yeah, if there's the mayor, and then you could also maybe um, investigate the slums. That's where a lot of people are going missing. Investigating the slums. Yeah, those are those would be down toward the quarry. Um, 
that'd be uh, on your way towards the mall. Oh, thanks. It'd be good to help those people on your way. Uh, I feel like I'm asking all the questions here, Dom. Did you guys have any uh, anything that you needed to know or anything that you might need to bring up? Just a quick little inconsistency in the, uh, the victims. Uh, so they said mostly people who, you know, not much family ties, probably wouldn't be missed by the townsfolk. And then the mayor's mother goes missing. Yeah, that was the strange thing about it. We don't know why they picked her at when she got picked. Because she was the latest victim. We don't understand why they're, they're disappearing like that. Well, um, if I'm putting some pieces together, which I probably am not putting them together the right way, it sounds like they're starting to get stronger folk. And they're starting... So whatever's been taking them is getting progressively stronger. That's not good. Your logic's sound. I can, I can, I can see that. Yeah. Hmm. That's some good insight there. Hmm. Anything else I can help you with? I don't have any more questions. I think we can go investigate that place. Get the key from the mayor. If no one else has any more questions, I would like to make a quick purchase before we leave, because I have no idea when we're going to come back. All right. What, what can I do you for? And he'll, uh, he'll kind of uh, like perk up a little annoyed, seeing that as coin is about to, to exchange hands. You would know that Sendry's bar also doubles as kind of a general store, so he has things like rope and caltrops and stuff like that here, too. Uh, you see uh, Eshrin sort of counting on his fingers, looking at everyone in the group. Six, no, eight, ten. Better, better make it ten. Ten bottles of need for the rope. Ten. All right, that's... um. It's quite in order. Um, that's going to be 30 gold pieces. Eshrin uh, pulls out his little coin purse and just starts sifting through. Just, Well, that's going to put a dent in my pocket. Well, this when you make a bad ten. choice, you might as well stick with it, right? And you see him uh, set, and you see him pulling out little handfuls of coins and counting them out so, until he gets to 30, just... That should be 30. He'll, seeing double. You're really going to blow all of your money on need. Hey, you never know. See, uh, on the one Sendry hand, slowly, if it's high fruit, slowly take on the, the coins. One hand, <laughs> on the one hand, if it's a high enough fruit, I can use it to start campfires, set people on fire, use it as a disinfectant, a painkiller. See that or one. Use the fire again. See the the I you probably you'd be wanting vodka for that instead of mead. While mead tastes good, it does not set on fire quite as nicely as vodka does. Trust me, trust me. I I've set plenty of fires. That All right. makes me trust you less. <laughs> he will he will set up the ten bottles of mead. They are uh 120 proof. Uh it's rather strong shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's oh, good yeah. shit. Anything else for you? Um Let's see. I'll take some rope. All right, I've got silk or hemp. Hemp will do. All right, that'll be uh, three gold pieces for 50 foot of hemp rope. All right, I'll take it. 
All right, and he will, uh, uh, he'll place that on the counter with the mead bottles. And I'll just, uh, take that gold out of my bag here, and, uh, here you go. I'm trying to find it on the sheet, also. Where is the gold on the sheet? It'd be in your inventory. <laughs> ah, gotcha. On the sheet. Uh, remind me again what the price was. Uh, three gold pieces for 50 foot of amber. Gotcha. And I'll just grab the last roll for that. Yes. Wonderful. Um, does anybody want to want to buy anything else uh, just while you're here? Have you got, like, rations and things so that you don't starve um, to death in the caves? What do they have for rations? Um, so he has, like, some standard field rations. There, it's, it's like, um, it's like dwarven jerky made from, like, deer and things of that nature you've got um hard tack in there but it uh, are like uh this like sponge cake stuff that uh while not the greatest it's better than hard tack how much for your sponge cakes well uh those would come in a pack with some jerky as a a ration so that would be a gold piece per ration and one one ration pack is enough food for a single day. Um, I'll take seven. All right, and he'll put seven packs of rations on the thing. Double that. I'm going to need seven rations myself, too. All right, he'll put seven more up there uh, on the counter. So that's uh, 14 total. Uh Eshrin sets uh, his seven gold in a neat little stack on the counter. The, Much neater uh, than the 30 gold he spent on the booze. Yeah, the uh, the dwarf kind of <laughs> counts it out real quick and throws it in a, in a, a now, now growing bag, purple bag. He's got like all his coins in a crown royal bag, essentially. <laughs> just, this beautiful like uh, purple and gold velvet bag. Anything else? Uh, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Anyone else? No. All right. I think we're good then. All right. Wonderful. Um, thank you for your uh, for your patronage, and he'll put up two backpacks on the thing, and these I'm gonna throw in for free because you. Spent quite a bit of gold today. So now you're not just lugging all of this shit in your pockets. <laughs> ah, well, thank you for your patronage. <laughs> no, thank you for yours. <laughs> um, If you're headed toward the slums, you're going to want to go to leave the tavern and take a right and then a left down... Uh, High Quarry Road, and then just head straight until you see the shitty part of town. If you want the mayor's office, it's the big building with the clock tower. All right. Got it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day. And I'll just turn to uh, head out the old tavern. All right. As the uh, the group of you exit the tavern, you see a, you know, the town is this uh, almost horseshoe shape with, uh, with little, um, little side streets kind of leading from the tavern, which seems to be kind of a center point of the, of the city as these, this uh, ice co and snow covered village is, uh, is, is on, on near the top of a mountain. Um, just adjacent to it is the, a large building, kind of like, almost castle-shaped, 
but not it's not a castle. It appears to be a like town hall of sorts with a very large clock on the top of it. And then uh the the side streets kind of lead off from there. Alright. Um so I think we should just head straight for the clock tower since that's like our main order of business. Anyone else? Any objections? I don't really have anything against that plan. What about you, Vector? You, you, you've been pretty quiet so far. Are you going to stick with being a strong, silent type for a while? Are you going to tell don't us? Don't make me cave your head in with an axe. Let's get okay. going so well. I can get my money so I can get more alcohol. Why do you think um, I bought so much mead? Almost forgot the word. Forgot what? It's weak. Forgot what kind of booze. <laughs> I had to check the label. <laughs> so much uh, mead. Yeah, that's what I bought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, um. You can head straight from the tavern to the uh, the mayor's office. You kind of see a pair of town guards. These like almost uh, like they're wearing like red tunics and and uh, like woolen hose underneath, um, so that they're not freezing their asses off. Um, they they have uh, like chain mail underneath the tunic, um, and each of them are equipped with a a large shield and a spear. And they stand on either side of the town hall door. Um, they don't stop you as you go in. Just kind of give you a side eye as you you head in toward uh, the mayor's. Uh, the mayor's estate, which is this uh, large uh, open area kind of, uh, with a like marble, almost um, like you can see the reflection of the ceiling in the floor um, with a, uh, a few like doors around the the um the main foyer area um and then at the top of a large kind of fan shaped staircase is the mayor's office um with the lower areas being like a dining hall uh you know a ballroom things of that nature that there where the mayor kind of puts on estate parties and things of that nature to uh rub elbows with other local politicians As we walk in, I just gesture to the guards and like, "Afternoon, gentlemen." <laughs> and keep walking through. You see one of them, an an elven, an elven man, just kind of nod to you. Stay out of trouble. I'll do my best. And he'll he'll kind of go back to being being silent, you know, spear spear in hand. <laughs> Buckingham Palace guard style, like don't really move a whole lot. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Those guys would look nice with some tall black hats. You hear, you hear the uh, one of the guards go, See, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be warmer than these damn helmets. <laughs> um, is there anyone yeah. else in the, in the hall? <clears throat> in the hall, uh, Specifically, uh, there's only one person inside. Um, there is a uh, gnome woman. She's got uh, very wild pink hair uh, combed as best she can um, because gnomes are known for, like, very poofy, uh, like, wild hair. Um, <laughs> her eyebrows kind of stick out a little farther than her face does. Uh, and she is sitting at, like, a, a desk writing things down. Uh, this is the receptionist for the for the mayor's office. Okay. Um, she is a foot and a half tall. She is standing on top. Like oh. she has to stand on a chair to reach the top of the desk. Sounds like she's having a little trouble. <clears throat> anyway, who are you calling little? <laughs> uh, I, uh, yo, you heard that? Um, hello. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. <clears throat> Uh, I'm you're not little. To... Uh, <laughs> yes, you are uh, quite tall for your. Uh, anyway, um, 
we are here to see the mayor. Yes. Mm. I don't see your names on my appointment book. Why are you here? Why why do you come to see the mayor today? Uh we are adventurers who are um here to look into the missing persons that have been happening lately. Oh, you're the ones that the fat lard, I mean mayor um Ooh. hired to to investigate his mother's missing uh his mother's disappearance. Right, right. Only now does he decide to help. It's not like other people's family members have gone missing or anything. My brother may be homeless, but that doesn't mean he's not he's not worth investigating. Anyway. Um yes, you just go on up. I he's not seeing anyone right now. You sound like you have some troubles of your own. My my brother lives in the slums. He was one of the first victims to go missing. Oh, I see. What was his name? Uh, his name is uh, Kroot Slackjaw. He's adopted. Uh, okay, why was the uh, adopted part? If you find him, you'll know. I see. Um, how do you spell that? Uh, Kroot, K-R-O-O-T, and then Slackjaw. S-L-A-C-K-J-A-W. So is, like, is Slackjaw like a family name, or is he... Slackjaw is a Goliath family name. Ah. See, I was, I was thinking that, you know gestures to jaw <laughs> <laughs> um goliath are known for uh for being incredibly large persons like uh they're they're between seven and nine feet tall so and and the slack jaw clan are a clan of roaming barbarians Okay. So they're not super well known, but they're well known enough where the the name would ring, hit your ear and you'd go, "Oh, that's why you mentioned he was adopted." Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> oh. I I finished writing down about the uh the Goliath man, and I'm like, well, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, well, I'm sure that we'll be able to figure out this problem in a little bit. I, I mean, a, a short, what, I'm, soon. Uh, she will just, like, squint real hard at you from behind just the biggest bottle, like, Coke bottle glasses. I bet you <laughs> will. Uh, yeah, yes. we're sorry for their loss. Kind of implies the guy's already dead. I honestly doubt that. Well, do you think that they're being kept for something? Yes. I mean, happened to some of my ancestors. Uh huh? Look at me. Look at me. I'm an Afriti. Uh. Oh, yeah. He's okay. he's part oh, genie. I get it. I I got you. Gotcha. Yeah. That checks out. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. You're fine. This is only like the what third time I brought it. No, second, second time I brought it up. Fair, fair. Uh, probably write that down. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be the Sorry. main character trait. Poor memory. <laughs> memento, memento moment. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's see. So that's one tall guy, one, one, one dwarf lady. So that's so far. That's pretty easy to find. Well, you. It was never mentioned explicitly that she's a dwarf. 
The mayor's not a dwarf. He... Okay, I was about to say, is the mayor a dwarf? Because that's the mayor's a human. Matter of fact. Okay. Uh, oh, so they're about my height. Then let's go make carrying people. Hey, Vecta, I keep forgetting. How much can you carry? I can carry my own body weight. I don't know. I've never pushed the limit. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, if you're going to go see him, he's in his office. He's up there, and she'll kind of gesture to the top of the stairs. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for your help. And uh, apologies. Have a nice rest of your day. She'll, like, uh, nod to, to Scarecrow's character. Thank you. <laughs> and then just glare at you. <laughs> and glare at Slack's character. Just... just, like, nervously, like, side-eye and walk away. <laughs> I believe this routine works. You say all the important things, and I help the group save face. <laughs> Look, I didn't expect her to... Anyway, let's get to the mayor. Uh, as you, I'm, I'm assuming you guys are going straight into like just kind of going straight in, or are you not? Um, probably be best to knock. Yeah, you, you never know. Just do a quick little, like Anna from Frozen, knock on the door. <laughs> Uh, he'll, you hear, I wasn't sleeping. What? Come in. Yes, come in. Come in. Just like, do like a, a concerned look towards the rest of the team and push the door open. <laughs> mm. Ah, you three. How fares it? How goes the investigation? Um, well, sir, that's why we're here. We were... About to start, but um, we needed some information. Oh, well, what information do you need? There's um, there's missing people. You go into the tag and and find them. Yes, uh, we were informed that one of them was your mother. Ah, loose-lipped townsfolk. Eh? I'll have to put a stop to that. Um. Yes. Allegedly, he was playing Zelda in the corner. Yeah, no, that's, he, he's just got a uh, he's got a a, a Game Boy, just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I'm not one to put my own family business out there, but my mother was at one point the archma archmagus of a small village. She wasn't a very well accomplished wizard, but she was enough for that town and. That's how I gained my position here, you see. And now she's gone missing. And I don't know why. No one really disliked her. She didn't have any enemies. That's why I must assume it was the work of monsters that have done this. Hmm. So... Mind if we borrow the key to her house so we can uh, try and get a guess as to what all took her so we can sort of prep for that? Mm. He'll, he'll reach into his jacket pocket and pull out this, like, ornate brass key. If even a single thing, and I know everything that's in there, goes missing, I will personally hunt you down... And kill you, and he'll, he'll offer the key. This man is, uh, he's, he's around six foot six, uh, broad shoulder, really big belly, um, probably couldn't catch you if he tried. Like, you could outrun this man <laughs> at a brisk jog. Uh, so you are going to personally come and kill us. If you take my mother's are. things, yes. Right, right. Uh, uh, you're you have our word that uh, nothing will ever happen. Sort of a glance over to uh, Vecta, just 
I'll throw a Twinkie on the floor. He won't have any choice but to dive after it. What did you say? Glare you have sweets? Him. What about sweets? My hearing's not the best. Um, we Don't were worry. saying that not we have a, a piece of sponge cake that we brought to you as an offering, sir. Oh, thank you. I will take that graciously. <laughs> and he, he, like, takes it and nibbles a little bit off of it, but he doesn't want to, like, devour it in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> he has some form of decorum, but he's he's not... He's definitely not the uh, the most well-put-together man on the planet. He's got a bit of a scruffy beard and... and uh, pro- like, uh, most dwarves would be ashamed to be seen with the beard he has. I mean... By his description, he sounds like he's a pretty well-rounded man. <laughs> I love the <laughs> puns. <laughs> what I bring to the party. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, um, yes. If that is, uh, is there anything else that we might need to know when going into that house or anything of that sort? Don't go near the mirror. You'll know which one. Uh, the mirror. Got it. Mirror. Just slowly scribbles down the word mirror. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure I'll remember what that means later. Other than oh, that, that's um, the yeah. um, front door carpet can fly. Don't make it upset. Can fly? Yes, it's a flying carpet. Uh, may I ask why it's the front door carpet, then? It's my mother's favorite carpet. She liked to, you know, fly around the house on it. I don't know why she puts it at the door. Fair enough. Um, you would know that, like, most houses in this area are, like, one or two rooms. So, like, how she can fly around the house on a flying carpet would probably, (laughs) um, is a mystery to you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, Is there anything else that anyone needed to ask the mayor or anything of that sort? Um, so, I suppose if that's all, um, we'll be going then. Uh, Wonderful! Thank you for your information, sir, and I'll be sure that nothing happens to your house. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that. I, um, I also appreciate the sponge cake. I, I do quite enjoy it. Well, uh, you know, if you, uh, happen to want any more later... I uh, might just come by and slip you another. Wonderful! You, my dear man, are a fine, fine gentleman. Thank you. I try to be. Um, as you you exit the mayor's office, you uh, and shut the door. You hear <laughs> as he tears into the sponge cake. Good God. <clears throat> I told you he was a fat lard. Uh, Where's the wine certainly... cellar? Say again? Where's the wine cellar? We'll drop off a bunch of sponge cake and we'll go raid that while he's not doing anything. <laughs> you see the, uh, you see the, the, um, the gnome get, like, a really wide grin on her face. And she, like, picks up a bottle of very expensive wine. Take this, he'll never know it was gone. Oh, thank you. And she'll just kind of like raise her very long eyebrows up and down, like just, just like I, I know how, I know the, I know the <laughs> game. I've been stealing from this asshole for years. Uh, 
Um, but yeah, so you have the mayor's uh, mother's house key. It's an ornate brass key. Uh, it looks to be uh, to some form of very, very complicated locking mechanism. Uh, all right. Locking mechanism. The key is surprisingly gaudy. So, uh, making our way over to the the house, then yes. Uh, yeah, and you were you did you received directions on how to get to the mayor's house, mayor's mother's house, uh, from the barkeep. So you go, um, down to Fifth Street, which would be, uh, a right and then a left from the bar. All right. Shall we then? <laughs> um as you as you exit the uh the um the the mayor's manor you hear uh kind of a, a scream from the slums uh it's it sounds like a almost like a horror movie shriek um do you want to check that out or check out the mayor's mom's house first we should check that out i don't like the sound of that scream. I might be in trouble. Hey, hey, quick question. How flammable are the slums again? Uh, most of the houses there are made of wood, so very. Can we uh... not burn down the slums we just got here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but... <laughs> I am a pyromancer. It's just... It's no the nature of the job. No guarantees can be made. Uh, oh my god. This is sorry. insane. <laughs> Where the hell did okay. I set my there it is? I had to grab my notebook. Um So I in a hurry just bolt over in the direction of where the scream was coming from. Alrighty. Um so as you uh as you each uh kind of get there, you uh you see standing in the center of the the slums, uh you notice that there are no guards. The guards did not come to the sound of the screeching. They just kind of let the slums be how they be. Um and you notice that in the center there is a man uh very slowly he looks like he's walking like he, it's an approximation of the act but his feet aren't touching the ground um and next to him is what at first you assume is a dog but um you quickly realize that it is uh a brain with four legs and rather massive claws oh well, that's definitely not what I expected. He's got a funny-looking pet. Uh, it looks like the pet's taken him for the walk. <laughs> uh, anyone else in the mood for barbecue? Let's not do that yet, but we should probably stop it, keep up with it. Um, I mean... And Vector heck a throw a javelin at the critter. You indeed can throw a javelin at the critter. Uh, and I'll give each of you one free, like one action before I make you roll initiative. Uh, let's see here. Let me look at my actions real quick. I don't think I. Maybe I should not have so many tabs open. That would help. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Um. <laughs> I got an 11. 
All right. You um. You huck a javelin at this um. This creature, and it seems to deftly move out of the way. As it will turn and drop the body. Um, from its uh, telekinetic grasp, as the um, the human that it was carrying is now unconscious. Like it was very clearly puppeting this man. How close is he to us? Uh, he's about 30 feet from you. Mm. And you're in like a, uh, a center courtyard surrounded by some houses. Um, in the center of it is a well, and just to the right of the well is where the intellect devourer and now the either unconscious or dead, you can't really tell which from here, man is laying. Um, is there a way I could make my way towards him? Um, you could? Is that what you're going to do action-wise? Um, probably, actually, no. I'm going, but I am, I'm going to move closer, but not, like, really close to the creature, but, like, in the direction of the person that is now unconscious slash dead okay uh that would be moving toward the creature because they are side by side okay then yeah i'm gonna do that i'm gonna move toward the creature <laughs> all right um you are you trying to get past the the creature um to get to get uh to get to the man yes all right, you will incur an attack of opportunity. Oh, hold on. My earbuds have disconnected. I cannot hear you at the moment. Can you hear now? Yeah. Yep, okay, good. cool. You will incur an attack of opportunity for trying to move past the creature. Uh, does a 20 beat your AC? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, they, it deals 10 damage as it rends you with it, with its claws. Well, bang. Um, and then, uh... Crow, what would you like your action to be as you see your friend get near rips, uh, uh, get near eviscerated? Uh, well, if my friend's about to bloody die, I guess now's a good time for me to, uh, start trying to keep my friends from dying. That would be useful, yes. <laughs> uh how much blood do I think has been lost so far? Uh at least half. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like a good a good like uh quart is 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 it's it's coming out. Dude, it was like a fruit gushers over here. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a uh, strawberry jam all over the the nice red the nice white snow. How far away are they? Uh 30 feet from you. See, I could walk up and fix that. So long as you don't I'm try and that. move past the creature, you can you probably could. And then everybody'll need to roll initiative. Yeah, I'll walk up to my friend and just slap a quick cure wounds on them. All right, uh, everybody, roll initiative. Um, 
Uh, should I roll to see how much I heal them yes. first? Yes, definitely do that, but also roll initiative. Cool. Five. Uh, uh, make sure you're rolling in the... Regains. In the what? Uh, never mind. I did, uh, make sure you're rolling in the Discord slot. Oh, the Discord? Yeah, Yeah. so I can see you. So I can see it. Okay. Uh, uh, Darius uh, regains uh, 10 hit points. Oh, good. <laughs> Darius should be back up to full. And I got a nice, healthy... 13 on initiative. Uh, okay. Can I do some six then? Or should I just keep the old one? Uh, what was the old one? The old one was five. Well, we'll go with the seven you rolled. Okay. Well, because I, uh, I get a minus one. Oh, okay, yeah, then the six. Uh, if you want to yeah. do those in the Discord, just type in, uh, roll 1d20 minus whatever you're or plus, whatever you're Oh, okay, got it. Uh, Oko, what did you roll? Seven. Alrighty. Um, so, and then the intellect power rolled a 14. Alright, so the intellect power is going to go first. Um, and it is going to attack you, uh, attack, uh, I'm gonna say it's gonna attack Crow, as it saw, uh, Crow heal with its claw. Uh, okay. Oh, well, that works. Um, does a 21 beat your AC? 21? Yeah, there's a 21 yes. beat your AC. Alrighty. Holy shit. Oh, what kind oh. of question is that? I have got a... <laughs> oh, boy. This is gonna hurt. Uh, you take 7 damage. Well, that's not as bad as I was expecting. Yeah, Come on, you got it, off easy. It could have been a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. It rolled a it two and two ones. All righty, it is now your turn. My yeah. turn, then. Lovely. Uh, I am going to cast Infestation on this thing. Uh, what does that do? Uh, you cause a cloud of parasites to appear momentarily on one creature you can see within range. Target must succeed a con save throw. This time around, it's a con save of 14. Uh, it takes 1d6 uh, poison damage and moves 5 feet in random direction if it can move. If it fails. Alright, give me one second. I'm going to actually start rolling in a private chat, because I just realized I wasn't doing that. <laughs> and you said it was a con save? Yes, ma'am. Alrighty. Uh, natural one, total eight. <laughs> mm. Yay, I get to pull a d6 Poison damage. <laughs> two! As, like, two little red beetles just scurry, <laughs> scurry along and then just, like, nip at it. And it has to run away from you now? Is that what you said? Uh, no. Now, I... Uh, it moves five feet east. Okay, both, of, both Slack and Crow... Roll an attack of opportunity. All right. Because it's, uh, it's moving away from you. So you can now roll your... Uh, 
due mm -hmm. to infestation, the movement does not provoke that. Ah, okay, cool. Then never mind. Infestation okay. is a weird spell like that. I mean, it's <laughs> that's called balance. <laughs> you know I what? Mean, it is a cantrip. You know what spell doesn't do like the, makes them move, but doesn't like uh, but does incur an attack of opportunity? Fear, and that's a level one spell. <laughs> Cause fear can make <laughs> you, and you have to run away from your opponent. I like <laughs> that. Um, okay. Uh, so um, it it moves five feet away from you. Um, it is now Oko's turn. Actually, no, Crow, you cast a cantrip, right? Oh, right. Cantrips that... are bonus actions. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I house rule that all cantrips are bonus actions. If that's the case, then I'm also going to, uh, go against the very fiber of my being as an arsonist and cast Ice Knife. Alrighty, what does that one do? Uh, you create a shard of ice and fling it at one creature within range. Make a range spell attack, which for me is d20 plus 6. Plus 6. Uh, on hit, target takes 1d10 piercing. Hit or miss, shard explodes. Target and each creature within 5 feet of it must succeed a dex save throw or take 2d6 cold. Okay. As a 9 hit. No, both you and Slack and the creature will will make a dex save. Uh oh. Uh, What's your spell DC? I have a minus one. Uh my spell save DC is a fourteen. Okay, it fails. Uh, I fail as well. Um and on a and a, on a successful check, or a successful save, uh, does the creature no still take? Okay, cool. Cool. Eight. Oh dear. <laughs> all right. Why roll. Like roll two d six. Six total. All righty. Uh. <laughs> I just look over and I'm like, I get why you don't use ice and only use fire now. <laughs> See, it hurts, <laughs> it's cold, it is not natural. Oko, it is your turn. <laughs> At least I the blood's frozen. Like to move up and cast iron. All right. That is. See, that's a pun I can get behind. <laughs> cast iron. Uh, before. <laughs> I do that though I'd like to rage. All right, you can you can in fact rage. Cool. And I swing with the battle axe. Uh, are you swinging one or two handed? Uh, two. All righty. So roll me an attack roll, please. Does a nineteen hit? A uh, nineteen would hit. Roll damage. Uh, I believe it's a 1d10 uh, as w in two hands. 13 damage. All right. Damn. All right. You said 13? Correct. All right. That's a lot of damage. I'm having to math, and this is my brain. I'm trying not to use a calculator. Um, alrighty, so it is now Slack, your turn. Cool. I've already been pummeled by not only them, but my teammate. <laughs> so How are you looking <laughs> health wise, by the way? I have eleven. Damn oh, out of no. twenty seven. <laughs> Oof. More than half. <laughs> I haven't even moved. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> uh, should I? Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Can I use 
like the healing stuff on myself. You can. You can heal yourself. Okay. I'm gonna take a bit of a few steps back and heal myself with uh some cure wounds. So you're you're moving out of the melee range of the um of the creature? Yes. Well, didn't it move out of melee range of us first due to infestation? Oh, yeah, 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 never mind. So oh. it is it is five people. Yeah, then I'm just going to so, heal yeah. myself. Okay, cool. Because, like, I was going to say, if, it, if you were within melee range, moving out of melee range incurs an attack of opportunity. <laughs> right. So it would have okay. a, basically have a free attack. Cool, um, cool. Alrighty, um, yeah, no, you can I'm absolutely going. heal yourself. Go ahead and roll. 1d8 plus 6. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, 11. Perfect. Uh, great! <laughs> Alrighty. Um, do you have... Uh, do you, are you going to try and move or anything like that? And um, do you have any cantrips that you can cast? That's the other thing, because you can do that as a bonus. Uh, how do I... Where are those? So those, they would be under your spells. If you had chosen spells, them. Cantrips. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> forgot to do that. Yep, that would be important. <laughs> okay. Um... A really good one for clerics, specifically, at least in my opinion, is Sacred Flame. How do I... I don't even know how to actually do that on here. It's been way too long. <laughs> Give me one second. Uh, go to the Spells tab and hit the Manage Spells button. Up near the top, there will be uh, Known Spells, and you can just click to learn or ready the ones that you want. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say I'm not going to do anything this time around, so I can look through that and not hold anything up. Okay, so it is now the creature's turn, and, uh, it is going to cast Magic Missile at, uh, at Oko, because <laughs> Zoko, uh, done fucked it up. Um, so, I think if I get a roll for that, I'm going to double check Magic Missile real quick. Okay, cool. And because Magic Missile never misses, uh, Oko, you take... Oh, I did that wrong. Uh, Oko, you take four damage. Pathetic. Um, you're not, uh, force damage doesn't get halved, right? From rage? What was that? Does for is force damage halved because of rage? Uh, it is sub? not. Okay, cool. Uh, then what's yeah, the you take... Uh, Path of, uh, the, uh, Berserker. Oh, I, I'm used to Totem Warriors. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, that will be the monster's turn, because that's kind of all it can do without getting itself fucked up. Uh, so that would be Crow, your turn. Make a move. Um... Well, since I'm basically within melee range of it, I probably shouldn't be using uh, ranged attacks against it, such as infestation or ice knife. Yeah, you that that would be bad. Especially yeah. ones that would explode on me, like ice knife. Yep. 
So instead, yes. I'm going to cast the Cantrip Shillelagh. Ooh. What does that one do? Uh, it basically buffs the wood of a club or quarterstaff I'm holding, changing its damp, yeah, making it a magical weapon, and turning its damage die from up to a D8, assuming it wasn't a D8 already. Oh, wonderful! I knew what the spell and did. I just wanted the people at home to know. It's my favorite. That's my favorite druid spell. And also, it makes it so my uh, I can use my spellcasting modifier instead of my uh, strength modifier when attacking with it. Alrighty. Um, and is that a cantrip or is that a spell? That is indeed a cantrip. Wonderful. Oh, so you can you can swack. <laughs> All right, go ahead and roll an attack roll, please. So let's see. Uh, proficiency would be added because it's spell attack modifier and... Yeah. Wait. Uh, spell modifier is plus four. Ranged spell attack is plus six. So this would just be a plus six. Okay. It's a dirty 20 hit. Yes, it does. Uh, roll damage. Bonk for five. Um, <laughs> it is looking uh, rather rough. Uh, it's not not quite like on death's door yet, but it is. It's it's taking a good bit of damage at this point. Uh, Oko, you're up. Smack it again with my axe. Alrighty, go ahead and roll uh, an attack roll, please. I'm gonna give your foe a good old bonk. Yeah. <laughs> Six doesn't hit, I'm assuming. Oh, no, no, not at all. But with my frenzy attack, I would like to swing at it again. Alrighty, go ahead. Take another swing yeah, because frenzy makes frenzy gives you advantage, but it also gives them advantage when they attack you. Yep. Uh, actually, no. It's a bonus action, and I just take exhaustion. Oh yeah, because that's, oh, that's that's reckless attack. Better. <laughs> frenzy is uh is where you, yeah you take exhaustion. Reckless attack gives you advantage, and then them also advantage against you. Yeah. Does an 18 hit? 18 will hit. Roll damage. Nine. Uh, okay, so... Um... Alrighty! It is, again, not looking very good. Uh, Slack, your turn. You are up, buddy. Okay. Um, so, so, who is in, so everyone else is in melee range, yes? Yes, uh, you, I believe, backed off. Yes. Um, I was looking over cantrips at the moment. Uh, let me see, how, how is everyone looking here? Um, I'm going to... As let's see, let me say get into I'm gonna get into range of um yeah I'm gonna get try to get to um Crow's character with the name Eshron yes and try and heal him okay with, uh cure wounds alrighty go ahead and roll for me. Six. Oh. Eight. Heck yeah. 
back in business. All righty. It is now the intellect devourer's turn if that is all you're going to do. Sly. Um, all right, I never actually added the cantrip that I was going to add. Let me do that real quick. Um, yes, uh, resistance. That's what I was doing. Okay. Uh, and what does that is, do? Is, um, is a, you touch one willing creature once before the spell ends, and the target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to one saving throw of its choice. It can roll the die before or after making the saving throw, and the, the spell then ends. Okay. So I'm going to cast that on um, Eshron as well. All righty. Um, so now it is the uh, the Intellect Devourer's turn, and the Intellect Devourer is going to uh, attempt to sweep at uh, Slack with its claws, seeing him uh, healing folk. Rude. Uh, missing. Uh, it's it's claws just just barely kind of uh make contact with your armor and then uh, and you have enough time to kind of back away as it kind of, as it slams its massive uh paw into the into the dirt. Um. Thought you had me that time. <laughs> uh it is now Crow's turn. Lovely. Oh uh, let's see, where's my button buttons? There's the big old buttons. Uh, if I remember correctly, Shalele lasts a minute, so that's, what, ten rounds? Yeah, ten? yeah. Yeah, so Shalele is still active, so... El Cabong! <laughs> Give it a good old <laughs> bonk! <laughs> yeah. The Taco Bell bell noise. <laughs> Bong! <laughs> Oh, that's a nat one. Oh no. <laughs> um oh. yeah, no, that doesn't hit. That definitely doesn't hit. Uh I'm gonna say that uh you you swing and kind of stumble forward uh as the intellect devourer um shifts away from you. Um it is now Oko's turn. Uh could I Cast a quick cantrip. Yes, you may. For that. Hey, no, you little bastard. Hey, no, you little bastard. Come back here. And I am going to cast infestation on it again. Okay. Uh, what's the saving throw so, again? Uh, what's the DC? Uh, con save 14. Con save 14. Got it. Uh, 24. Oh, boy. Yeah, that that's a healthy save. Yep. Uh, oh. And does it take half damage? What, what happens on a save? No, it just don't take any Nothing? damage. Okay, cool. And it doesn't Nothing. have to move. Awesome. It will screech it at you. It basically just shakes the little bugs off. Yeah, it will, like, do a dog shake and, like, screech at you. Um, like, almost like a bat sound. Um. Uh, all right. Um, it is now Oko's turn. I rolled a bonk. Okay, go ahead and roll an attack roll, please. Not twenty, twenty-four. Okay, so do you remember how I, how I do um, critical hits? Do max damage and then roll? Yep. Do I add the modifier to that max damage? Yes. Okay. So it'd be whatever your max weapon damage is, 
plus your modifier plus a roll. Seventeen. Okay, so that's exactly enough to kill it. Please, please tell me uh, how you murder this monster. This axe through the back. Okay. Um. So as your axe comes down, you hear a squelching. Uh, and a, like it goes to screech and it makes a ah noise, and then you put an axe straight through it as it squelches and dies, and there's now gray matter and blood on the snow. Um, the human who was in its thrall slowly begins to, like, come, like, uh, come to. He's a vagabond looking, vagabondly looking gentleman. He's got a, a dagger on his hip, and his, his, uh, his attire is, is tattered, like, uh, clo- he's obviously like a pickpocket of some kind. Um, but he, uh, he was being taken from his home by this monster. And, uh, you have murdered it. Uh, talk about a splitting headache, am I right, guys? Boom! <laughs> guys. <laughs> Rage technically isn't over. Uh, can I swing at our good friend, the dr- cleric, for the bad pun? <laughs> you can! <laughs> I'm just going to end rage and take the exhaustion. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um. So yes, yeah, so you have a single point of exhaustion. Just make sure to keep track of that. Um. Uh. <laughs> uh and you have ended combat. Uh. Your. Uh. You see, kind of. Uh. The the guy kind of comes to and goes. Oh. Oh, my lords. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much for, for saving me from that, that horrible beastie. I, I don't know how I can repay you. I, uh, I'm, I see, I don't have any money. Um, well. Your clothes. Uh, what, what? Hand my them over. Clothes. My, my clothes? Um, but it's freezing it's out. out you can't just ask a guy for his clothes like that. Why, why not? I mean, I mean, they just did. Okay, but like, um, why not? You know, see what's in the clothes first. If well, there's a person in the clothes, and I'm trying to make that naught. <sighs> okay. He uh, he, you Sound see him logic. like rifle through like his clothes real quick, and he pulls out a out of his like out of his shoe. He'll pull out this like small pouch that very clearly is not of the same quality as his clothing. Like, this was likely picked from someone's pocket. Um, he, he, here, if you don't take my clothes, I'll give you this. And, uh, and inside of it is a, uh, about three, there are three small rubies, each worth 15 gold apiece. Acceptable over your clothing. Thank you for your business. Oh. I'll get lost before I change my <laughs> mind and decide to take your clothes. Uh, he will. He will indeed oh. scramble the fuck away. <laughs> like, he'll at least ask his name. <laughs> Isn't it usually uh, you take someone out to dinner? Treat them to a night on the town, and then you tell them to take off their clothes. He doesn't really uh, mince words with that, huh? Right to business, eh? I just wanted his clothes. I didn't want nothing to do with him. As he said, can... it's fucking cold. We can get you a new out. Actually, you you didn't spend much money over at the uh, the, the, the the bar, did you? We can get you a couple new outfits, if need be. Uh, that takes time away from doing the job, which takes time away from money, which takes time away from alcohol. But I mean, you got if, money. If, if you're all Thank that you. cold, I mean, I could always, and I'm going to use the cantrip produce flame. I mean, I can keep us warm. 
heft and axe and say, put that away. Eshrin uh, <laughs> clenches his hand into a little fist, causing it, causing the once little magic ball of flame to just turn into smoke with a shit-eating grin on his face. Um, so while these two are interacting, Slack, roll me a perception check. Okay. Wait, hold on. Is there like, do I get any additives to that? I didn't even know. So it would be your perception uh, skill? Yes. Perception. So it'd be okay, 1d20 so that, plus whatever be... it is. That'd be a 16, not a 12. Alrighty. Um, so out of the corner of your eye, you kind of see, an, uh, it looks like an older looking lady uh, kind of watching you from, from like her home, from like her porch. Like she had seen what was going on and she, when, when she heard uh, Vecta talking about being cold, you see her kind of come out with these three woolen cloaks. Uh, and she oh, kind of hello. heads toward you. Hello, my name is Ethel. Um, I have these if you're not feeling so warm. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I take the coats and hand them to the others. This nice lady just decided to kindly solve our problem of you being cold. Vecta will look at the cloak and then back up at the woman and toss her one of the small rubies. You never take anything from free from anyone. Oh. Learn that. I. That's that's okay. My my husband hunted the pelts for them, so I I ha just have them in excess. We he's he's a hunter here in the vi well he was a hunter here in the village. The mayor, the mayor hasn't been really paying attention to. Who's been going missing? Just us slum folk don't exactly have a lot or, or many people around us, so we just have one another. Are you going to look for my for 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 the, for the missing individuals? Uh, yes, we're actually on our way to try and figure out what's been going on here. If you can find my husband, I'll reward you greatly. Um, okay. Um, could you describe him to us? He's a older human gentleman. Um, black and salt and pepper hair. Um, bronze sun-kissed skin. He, he hunts a lot. He's out in the sun most of the day. Um, carries a, a short bow and typically wears a, a green tunic with, with wooden toggles. Please bring him home to me. Uh, what is his name? His name is Roger. Roger. Okay. Um, where did he, where was he last headed when he disappeared? Last time I saw him, he was going down toward the thicket by the mall. It's the only place the wolves are anymore, and so, in order to make us money from wolf pelts, we need, he needed to hunt some. He never hunts more than we need. We don't know why the wolves have, have stayed away from the village lately. They typically don't, uh, aren't quite smart enough to, to realize that he's picking off one or two. Probably has something to do with those weird brain things, assuming there's more than one. I Man. I would think so too. Oh, I hope he's okay. Actually, hey, I know oh. a little trick to keep people fed. I mean, if you need, I can I can provide you a couple days worth of food if you know. 
you're a little strapped for cash. Oh, no. Um, I have... We have food stored away for the winter. The winter gets very bad. That's when the, the wolves hibernate. So Roger had stored us some meat away. But, um... I also am, am... I am the baker in town, so I can make my own food. But thank you very much for the offer. Uh, and Ashrin is going to cast, uh... Goodberry, producing, uh... Producing ten of these lovely little red fruits in, in, uh, in his hands and just... Sue yourself, I think that tastes pretty nice. And he just munches on one. Such a cute name for a spell. Yeah, Goodberry. <laughs> oh, you're one of those magical types. That's always so nice to see young people getting into the arcane arts. And I pick up a trick or two when I find something that helps. Well, it, it clearly helped quite a lot here. I hope you all find your way safely back and forth. And she will, uh, she, she's quite obviously, like, starting to get cold mm -hmm. and trying to slink her way back into her house. You have a nice rest of your, uh, nice rest of your day. Uh, we're gonna be getting off. Stay safe. Yes. Thank you, you all, very much. You all stay safe as well. Uh, she did not give back the ruby. She did, in fact, take it. <laughs> <laughs> she seems nice. Uh, um, the, the cloaks that you've been given are indeed very warm and very soft. Uh, very obviously made from wolf's pelt. It's like hugging a mother wolf. Yep. Um, so, it's, the, in the uh, residue of the brain thing, uh, is there anything that uh, we could search through? No, it's, it's pretty much just a brain on the ground with legs attached. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just thinking of like big hairy man legs at the bottom of this oh lord little <laughs> this bottom of this little brain <laughs> hold on let me get a picture I'll, I'll i'll grab one for you is it buff mimic oh no no it is not buff mimic don't you bring that up <laughs> i remember buff mimic of course you remember buff mimic i made you fight buff mimic uh... <laughs> Uh, whilst we're uh, investigating the brain, Eshrin offers a couple of the uh, wrinkled up little red berries to uh, to uh, Darius and Vecta. Vetka. Mm, Either of you hungry? You. Uh, sure. I'll, I'll take a I'll take a berry, just like flick it into the air, catch it in my, in my mouth. Roll a con save. Ah. Uh. Um, hold on, uh, what is that? Just a d20? Uh, it's 1d20 plus your, uh, constitution saving modifier. Gotcha. Um. <laughs> there should be a little section that says saving throws. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crow, what's your spellcasting, DC? I'm trying to hurt him. <laughs> Oh no. You were the one that picked uh, out fucking uh scorpion peppers. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh I have a plus four mod, plus six for attacks. Okay, so uh, it's fourteen. Uh save DC is fourteen. <laughs> hey, that's my spell save. Oh, that's a twenty one. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, yeah, no, you eat it. It's spicy as all hell. But it's it's it doesn't hurt you. <clears throat> got a got a kick to it that one. But good stuff. Uh, you also regain one health. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And you I got are good, Barry. And you are full <laughs> for the day. Like that's all the food you really need. 
<laughs> like that's how the spell works. What a meal! Yeah, uh, just a, <laughs> a single scorpion pepper all day. Destroy your insides <laughs> for one health, and you're full for the entire day. It's so like spicy you don't even want to eat. <laughs> Alrighty. Sponsor us, Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, sponsored by Chipotle. Oh my god. Yo, when we hang out, that's what we should go eat this night. Ooh. I want Chipotle yeah. really bad. I haven't okay. done that in a while. Yeah, we should do that <laughs> at some point. Um But yeah, uh so you guys are um are able to um to kind of take these cloaks. Uh where do you go from here? Because right now you have a dead intellect devourer and it's just kind of Brain goop with legs. There's nothing really to investigate about it. Um, tracks where it came from, which is the thicket where the uh, where the hunter was last seen, um, which lead down into the quarry, which leads to the tithe, um, and then the the mayor's mom's house. And so, like looking at the picture of the intellect devourer. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder how edible the legs are. I'm gonna take one. All right, all right. Yeah, you can you can put an intellect devourer <laughs> leg in your backpack. Cool. And after my own heart, wondering how everything tastes. <laughs> Game. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, all the games. This whole uh, this app's being weird. Okay, got it. You gotta add a um a custom item intellect yeah. devourer leg. Um description wonder how it tastes. You've you've just chopped it off with the hand axe that's in your belt. <laughs> yeah Delicious. Oh lord. Um, okay, where are you guys? <laughs> Heading after the <laughs> intellect devourer has been butchered. All right, uh, we should make our way to the house that we were heading to before. All righty. Um, I'm assuming the rest of the party is in agreement with that. Any objections? I want to see this carpet that supposedly gets angry. Ooh. Yes. Please. All right. I mean, not like the carpet. I would prefer, I prefer if, if, you if you are... didn't anger it. <laughs> well, don't we could turn it into a cloak. Carpet. Could have a flying cloak. I mean, you could. You that could does just sound pretty badass. You could also just steal the flying carpet and have the flying carpet. We could promise not to do that though correction uh, you, you promised, promised. <laughs> oh my goodness we didn't promise anything to be fair they're acting as group conscience they're keeping us from stealing too much keeping us from killing too much keeping us from setting whole towns on fire well, I mean, that last one should be a given in any situation. I don't know, it solved the problem here. Can't have villagers go missing if there's no villagers. Or a village. Mm. Or a village. But the creature would just find another place to steal people. Then remove that one as well. Or we could remove I feel like the we're place dancing around the, the roots. <laughs> we could also remove the place that the creature's coming from. That sounds like fun. Or just remove the creature, which is what we're trying to do, I thought. 
So we've got one vote for going to the creature's uh, nest. What do we call the nest? Are you asking me? And uh, one... I'm asking anyone who's willing to hear. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. Nest. Let's go with that. All right. One vote for going to the creature's nest and doing some exterminating work. And one vote for robbing an old woman. Robbing What? No. I... <laughs> okay. Mm. You know... <sighs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Betka, Betka, mm -hmm. I'll make you a bet. I'll make you a bet. All right, I'm all ears. So I got seven of my, I got seven of these little berries left. If you can eat all of them and keep a straight face, I will go in there and I will help you steal that carpet. All right. You're on. Okay. Are you would, would the spicy technically count as poison? It is not no. counted as poison, no. Shit. Okay. It's just spice. Yeah. And it doesn't it's got even some kick. It doesn't kill you. It just hurts. Roll me uh a con save with disadvantage. Wouldn't it be seven individual con saves because it's seven berries? Nah, I'm gonna say one with disadvantage. All, All right. at once? Mm-hmm. I mean, so 15 <laughs> and 22. Just take a handful. 15 so, and 20. Ah. Uh, what's your, uh, what's your, your spell save DC, Crow? 14? 14. Yep, 14. you're seeing. You're robbing an old lady. Uh, oh. You're robbing the old lady. And, uh, oh, Oko, you get us. seven points of health back. Oh. So, um, I've run into a bit of a problem. What's your problem? I hear that both of my earbuds are dead, so I'm going to go into push to talk for the rest of the stream. Oh. That's understandable. Um, as a matter of fact, what we can do is we can call the stream here for the night. Now that we know that you're where your next step is going, um, you'll all level up to level four and, uh, come back same time next Saturday. Sound good for y'all? Yep. What's happening? Um, so my pitch was we end the session for tonight here because that's kind of a good stopping point. You've murdered the intellect power. You gained a level from that. Uh, so you'll level up to level four and we'll come back next Saturday, same time, um, and continue the, the one shot. An elderly woman. Got it. Yep. This went from save a town to rob the elderly. This is what <laughs> happens when you're the only, like, voice of conscience in the group. <laughs> well, you've got an alcoholic with PTSD, and then you've got an arsonist. Yep. And then Pick your boys a holy the hometown hero. <laughs> yep. Trying to deal with these two potential criminals. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so wh while we're, uh, we're gonna be doing the outro, Slack, would you like to plug anything upcoming before we head out? Well, uh, if you would like to follow me on, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Twitter, I have, it's at capital T, capital S, it is the Slacktopus on Twitter. Uh, I post art there and, uh, get updates on my own streams. Uh, where I am currently playing through the arena, Ultimate Arena Z of Kirby, which is going to be an endeavor and a half already. So uh, feel free to tune in for that. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is at 8. Uh, and if I can get a, a sh another shout out for Slack in the chat. Um,
Crow, do you have anything that uh, is upcoming? Uh, nothing I can think of. Truth be told, I haven't streamed in a while, and I have no idea the next time I'm actually going to host my own stream. That, that's completely understandable. I believe in you, homie. That makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oko, would you like to uh, plug or, or uh, say anything uh, that's upcoming with you? Nope. Alrighty. Um, we're going to go ahead and raid Mauve. Uh, or well, technically we're raiding Sleepy Char, but uh, Mauve, Ac Mauve, Char, and Axie are playing um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shredder's Revenge. So, ooh, um, I gotta figure out how to spell Char's name. Not like how to spell it, but more like how Char has spelled it because I've fucked up so many, uh, so many raids by not capitalizing correctly. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go over and raid Char, and uh, you folks have a wonderful evening, and thank you for joining me, and I will see you guys again next Saturday uh, at 7 o'clock. Um, yeah, just let Char know that this is a Paladin raid. Alright, bye y'all. Goodbye.